Ah, Loish. Loish, Loish, Loish. First of her name, Queen of the Andals and Protector of the Realm. If there's any woman that wields a pencil I will bow down to, it's gotta be Loish. But not today. Today we are going to break down everything she has built for years, rip apart her art and fix it. But Mohammed, you smart and hilarious advocate for the less privileged digital artist. Isn't Loish one of the top level artists with skills worthy enough to be compared with an elder god? Of course. But if there's one thing a video game can teach us, it's god can be killed too. <laughs> and that leads us to the premise of today's video, breaking down the art of Loish and fixing it. But before all you curious cats and kittens see where I destroyed the art of Loish, let's take some time out and appreciate some really fantastic artists on Instagram. So first today is Elisa Rio. She's 25 and she has some really fantastic art on her page. Right now, I think she's doing a fan art train. This is Kronk and this is a really nice Hades from Hercules. I really love that guy. Next person on the list is if dot art if art really really fantastic portraits on his page i love this one with the girl with sunglasses and i also love this one i love how the orange just separates the silhouette of the character next person on the list is golden cheese art golden cheese hmm i think you can upload some more work on your page man next person on the list is alan p sandoval really really lovely nice studies uh, i love the lighting on this particular portrait it's pretty much one of my favorite on his page and if you just take a look, you can find some more uh, studies, some pencil drawings, and a little bit of character concepts scattered around the page. So make sure you follow all of them. And if you also want a shout out, you can leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle on the first pinned comments underneath this video. And then you make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new here. If you really clicked on this video expecting me to trash Loish and make her look really bad as a person or an artist, I think there's something really wrong with you. You need to check yourself because she is really fantastic. She's really, really talented and has really fantastic art anyone everyone i myself look up to her as a person so today we're just going to be breaking down a couple of her images and see what we can learn from her style she loves to use this uh luminescence um pattern of lighting in her works where she has certain materials glue certain objects certain elements in her characters glue like this fish and sometimes she has a lot of glow in her clothing or in the hair of her characters so today we're just going to take a look at that and i'll pretty much explain how this works because i see a lot of people trying to emulate this kind of lighting in their works but they kind of don't really understand how it works so in today's video i'm just going to break down the art of Loish and we're going to look at a couple of images and I hope this helps you pretty much understand how you can create a similar pattern or a similar lighting effect in your own works. So this is the first image from Lush that we're going to be looking at and why I love this one so much is it has a harmonious color scheme going on in the image where she has blue and she's also mixing it with a little bit of purples and then she has a little bit of orange right here just to cause contrast between this purple here and then a little bit of orange here and also this purple and this light purple that's close to white right here which is highlights in the eye so immediately your eyes just get drawn to this part of the image because it, there's a lot of contrast of color right here and then you also notice this so all this light right here is all leading us back to this place so if you if you look at the image your eyes go like this leads you right down here back into the eye and then there's all the contrast of color right here in the image so first off i'm going to be talking about how she does this light so this kind of lighting is called a luminescence lighting where you have an object emits a cool light source but if it's a warm object if it's a hot object it's called incandescence lighting but sometimes hot objects still emit cool lights at night so this is pretty much what she has on going here and what you can notice is as all the elements from her hair seem to be glowing it's pretty much creating another light source around the character so you can see right here under her chin this light source is creating a blue uh, reflected lights going back into the shadows underneath her chin so her chin is pretty much being lit by this blue light source and you can see the same thing a little bit around here by her nose on top of her forehead by the ears and then just a little bit right here on her shoulder and then if you study the entire piece closely 
you can notice that there is a big key light right here that's actually lighting the entire figure the entire character coming from the top so this is just a secondary light source there's actually another light source that's lighting the full character so that's why this blue light is not powerful enough to create all the lighting right here that's hitting her so you can see it's just hitting behind her neck right here and she's still being lit from here so if you're trying to replicate this kind of lighting in your work if you're trying to create it i would usually just love to do it on normal layer first just to break down what the light will look like so first off if i'm going to be using hair i would just love to create the form the shape of the hair that i'm going to so right now i'm just creating say a bunch of hair follicles and the part i want to glow in the image is right here starting from the bottom so first thing i'll do is i'll lock this layer lock the pixels right here by clicking this and then i'll choose a kind of brighter color not too bright just a little bit of a bright color and then i'll use a soft brush to just brush that in so just by doing this you can already see that it's beginning to have that feel of a little bit of a glowing effect and then next thing what i'll do is i'll actually use either a screen layer or a linear dodge layer depending on what i want to do in the image so a screen layer will make everything really bright and it might reduce the saturation a little bit but a linear dodge layer will preserve the saturation and sometimes even make it more saturated so i'll choose a new layer created above this layer and then i'll set that layer on linear dodge and then i can now begin to brush in oh whoops this is a little bit too intense it's a little bit too saturated so i'll reduce the color uh reduce the brightness of that color that's what happens when the color is too bright it just gets out of hand so i reduce the brightness and then i'll begin to paint in gradually above where i want the glow to be so you can see immediately this has um that kind of glow effect that she usually has in her work and the next thing you might want to do is just go in and pretty much brush a little bit closer to the edges of where um, your hair is because closer to the edges is especially where there's going to be a lot of um, glow in materials and objects so next thing i'll do is probably create a little bit of a bright i'll choose a little bit of a brighter color just to emphasize the glow around the edges and then i'll just keep going and then i'll keep fading it as it heads up towards the top of where the glow fades the glow finishes so right now you can see it's looking pretty decent pretty smooth and then one thing i love to do again is to just use some textured brushes just play around with textured brushes and see what that looks like and my favorite brush pack when it comes to using textured brushes is this brush pack from victor types of i actually bought it recently and it's really fantastic it has a lot of neat uh sweet textured brushes in there and you can just play around with them and see what you can do so for this i love to set the layer on color dodge and then i just brush in gradually where i want the texture to be applied so sometimes it might not look good but you just have to kind of think of the flow of um your hair and the texture that you're trying to imply in your image and then just replicate that with your brush strokes so this one just has a little it doesn't really fit what i'm trying to do but i got this nice stroke right here which i kind of like so i'll just leave it there and then i'll look for another brush that has a little bit of a different um texture and then i'll try that out a lot of the times using texture brushes you really have to um try out a lot of brushes and just see which one suits your particular image i love the effect this one is giving me where um, it looks like there's some noise around the edges it's pretty nice and then i'll just use one more just to, i'm looking for something that has a little bit of a scatter just to so for this last part i just choose a brush that has some form of scatter and then i just gradually just brush in some marks somewhere just to create some variation with the color and now you can see it just looks like this hair is glowing in the dark so this already looks fantastic and next thing what i'll do is just merge everything together in a group you don't want to merge everything together into one layer if not you might 
probably lose the effects if you have a lot of effects going on so what you might do is just merge everything in a group and then next thing is to kind of consider what objects are below this so if there's an object right here and let's just use a random color if there's an object right here and it's right underneath this where you have the glue you always want to think about how that object is going to react to this light source so because it's right here it's close to where there's a glue you want to paint in a little bit of that glue onto the object depending on if the object is being hit by any other light source so right now i'm just going to be using just the glue as the light source so i'm just painting in the glue just mildly just painting in a little bit of that glue on the object and you always want to think how the object is turning what direction is turning and what part of that object is going to be released the most by your your glow your light source so uh i think this works this already looks pretty much sweet pretty good it looks close to what um Lois does in her images and you can try this out and see how it works for you the only thing you might want to do is uh kind of have these other different shapes of the hair just to make it look like the hair is swishing the hair is moving back and forth so you can try that out in your work now the next thing we're going to look at is this effect that she does in her art where it looks like the clothes the character is wearing glow from the inside and she also likes to do this with the hair a lot this is a particular image that she really nailed this so much and you can see how it just looks like her hair is glowing there's a light source right inside the hair and it's just lighting everything within the neck this glow right here is just lighting up the entire place it's lighting the chin lighting the neck lighting everywhere and it's just really glowing and it just feels like it makes the character it gives the character kind of mood i can't really explain it but it just looks nice and what you want to understand about this lighting setup is two things you need to understand actually first you need to understand translucency so that means how translucent the object or the material you're rendering is because if it's really light if it's translucent that means light will come in from a direction hit the object and then go through it let me make this bigger so if light comes in from a particular direction it will go in to the object because the object is a translucent material it will go in through the object and then it will begin to spread and hit different parts of the object and then when it hits all these different parts of the object these parts that is hitting begin to bounce off light in other directions so just creating a light source within this material so that is exactly what's happening right here with her hair so as you can see there's a light source right here and the light source is coming down it's hitting her from behind and it's hitting the hair and as it's hit the hair it's going out into different directions and then it's also passing through the hair because the hair is translucent so it's passing through the hair and then it's lighting all these other parts of the character and just filling all the other elements of the character with light and if you want to see how this works a lot if you just take your fingers and just put them in front of a light source you will see this particular effect this is exactly the effect it's called subsurface scattering and it's just when light passes through a translucent material and spreads within it so you can see how the object has this uh outline of white because the light is really bright and then inside the object which is our hands it's just filled with red because our arms our body is filled with lots of blood and because light is passing through this material it's just filling up the entire finger with light and what we can see is red which is the color of the blood so this just happens a lot this you see it right here all the fingers and because this part is the most dense this part has a lot of blood in it that's why it's really dark and then as the light disperses and goes down it reduces it reduces until the object becomes more solid and it's no more it's no more as translucent as it was at the tip of the fingernails this is a really fantastic thing to do I, um, 
I found this study on Deviant Art. I'll find a way to link the guy's Deviant Art underneath the video. But I think you can do these studies on your own just to understand how subsurface scattering works. And you can also see this when you take a light source and put it behind a character's ears or you just put it behind your own ear or your friend's ear. This will look really funny, but just take a light source, maybe take your phone light source and just put it behind your friend's ear. You are going to see this particular effect. This is subsurface scattering. So same thing, the light comes in from behind, hits the ears because the ear is translucent. It spreads around within the ear and we can see this warm red light source because the ear is filled with blood as well. So that's exactly what she's doing right here with the hair and it's pretty much the same process if you're trying to replicate this it's pretty much the same thing as when you're doing hair so for this i'm just going to use a dark red color and and i love to do this on a color dodge layer so i set the layer mode to color dodge and then i'll use a soft brush and then i'll just begin to paint in um what that subsurface scattering would look like so if our light source is coming in from the right hand side, definitely there's going to be um, some light here. So let's assume the light source is pretty much a warm light source. Let's just set up a warm light source. So we have a warm light coming in from here, hitting our object. And our object is being lit. Everything is going good. Everything is going well. We have our shadows right here next thing I want to do is I'm begin, I'm going to paint in what is going to be the subsurface scattering and very easy just everything right now is just on the color dot layer so I'm not doing anything fantastic so all I'm doing is just painting gradually gradually what the subsurface scattering will look like and another thing you want to think about is how bright this light source is so as I can see this light source is not as bright as I want it to be so I'm just going to be brighter so you can understand how because the light source has to be uh, really bright and strong for you to have that much of uh, subsurface scattering going on within your shadows or within the objects that you're painting this is pretty much it looks good and then the next thing you want to consider is because this light source is is because this material is translucent we know that the light source is going to spread around as well so you want to make sure that your all the objects that are beneath this place beneath the character beneath the object that you're rendering are also going to get lit by this um this light source so it's going to emit kind of a warm reddish tone because the material is red it's going to emit a little bit of that warm reddish tone around where we have our objects this is basically the mindset you want to have when you're uh, trying to go into making paintings and using the subsurface scattering technique or lighting setup so this is exactly how you're going to approach making an image where you're using hair like this and it really isn't that hard it's really once you just think of where your light source is next thing you want to do is just pretty much paint in into whatever element that is using where your light is coming from probably in the future i'm going to make another video and discuss how she uses colors in her work talk about her color palettes the color scheme she loves to use in her work and see how we can learn from that so if you enjoyed this video if you learned something from this video please leave it a like and subscribe to my channel if you're new here and i will see you guys in the next video peace out Now I gotta ride or die